Well, unless you're living under a rock, by now you should know about Steven Crowder's debate debacle. Steven Crowder is a debate bro who does debates on a regular basis, although he does them with unprepared college students. And this is a media-trained individual. So, you know, he likes to debate on the easiest difficulty imaginable, but when it comes to people who are actually intelligent, he's a little bit more afraid of that. So he challenged Ethan Klein to a debate, someone who he claimed would be a layup, but uh, unfortunately for him, he got a surprise that he wasn't too happy about. Steven, do you know that um, the Spartans are, that they are like uh, practice man love with children? Oh, geez. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. I to what did I tell you? He was going to do anything he could to avoid. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, no, Sam Cedar. What a, whoa, oh, what a fucking nightmare. You, I had no idea this was going to happen. I thought, I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. This is oh, where we are. Wow. Yeah, I told Dave, Dave, remember I told you? I told you. I said, this is, I guarantee you he's going to do anything he can to avoid the debate. Oh, I just think he believes that he should debate you. No, no, he doesn't. He just takes advantage of, of women with, you know, mental health Steven, issues. Ethan Klein doesn't I, stand up and do to his own fighting. I gotta say, it's just hilarious. Let's bring on FM. You would uh, do anything to avoid talking to me. I think you're, the point that you made. Yes, that's Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe Rogan and, Dave Rogan and Ben Shapiro and, and Dave ben Rubin Shapiro. and Jordan Peterson and Noam Chomsky and Sam Harris. Everyone's been avoiding. And not just attempting to get your audience by jumping in. <laughs> well, I, I debated <laughs> with uh, Charlie <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> Stephen, I mean, it's okay. about issues. Let's it's about talk issues, about those yeah. issues. That's I think what you're doing some here. Valid yeah. points. You're so clever. I just no idea that you were taking your show off early last time, coming in today with your pig pen peanuts. I wish every. <laughs> You take those off with a velveteen they really button. Are, we must have been Black very worried eyes, about this, Stephen. Like I don't know why. No one would be worried oh, come about it. So Sam, concerned. I didn't want to well, do let's, it. Let's have Sam, a debate. Come on, no just, I'll worried, tell you what. I have a general. This. I have a general. This is a rule. great opportunity. I don't start a debate based with people on a lie. And how about you get sabotaging? To a, how about you get Stephen? Show yourself, you coward. Stephen, show yourself. Don't show your co-host. Ethan, you should show yourself. Ethan, how can you respect yourself as a man, brother? Stephen, so Stephen, you are such a Howard, yeah, stop showing your little leprechaun co-host who comes out right. dressed hey, like Ethan, your Ethan, sidekick. Come on, Ethan, why do you have to bring I'm on a show? Show Stephen. The I'm really of the viewers why is the best thing I've ever heard? So you Just have a show guy with Steven. less viewers to come on to debate him because you. <laughs> he was not ready, and I just want to read back that quote. Once he saw that Sam Cedar was on the screen, he said, "Oh no, Sam Cedar! Well, what a fucking nightmare." And he admits that he was tracking Sam's activity the week before to make sure that he was live so there would be no possibility that Ethan can do a little bit of a switcheroo and bring on Sam Cedar. And even like before he spoke to uh, Sam Cedar, you can hear in his voice he was actually trembling like you could see how nervous he was and it doesn't really make sense to me i mean you are a debate bro you challenge everyone to debates it's your shtick you're the change my mind guy so the fact that you won't even engage with somebody else especially when they're on your level you think that you'd want to really test your skills right and debate sam cedar but he didn't want to do that and he proceeded to have a meltdown down and then um he just straight up he left Let's debate, uh, Stephen. Don't hide behind the glass. Don't be a coward. Don't say we'll, let's debate, Ethan. You've I lost coward. Coward. Debate. All right. debate the sad. issues. What this does is it matter who you debate, coward? <laughs> All right, good. You guys are good. Thank you. Coward. Steve, you won't even take off the glasses. Uh, I was right. All right, yeah. We you can, you can run away. This you is... run away twice. Cold feet again. Come on, Stephen. Wow. Wow. Dude, I can't believe he admit to following... He admitted that he followed the show <coughs> last week. We got him. He admitted that he watched the show last we week. We got we him. Early. Dude, we played him so hard because oh. he, he literally was following. He saw that you went live, dude. We fucking got him. Oh, my God. We fucking nailed him. <laughs> wow. It's just... um. It's hilarious. <laughs> and <laughs> you're probably wondering, like, okay... He's going to take the L on this, right? He's just going to admit, look, we were ambushed. I wasn't necessarily ready to debate Sam Cedar. I would have prepped if I knew it was going to be Sam Cedar. But no, he's actually trying to spin this to make it seem as if he came out victorious. Yeah. So 
First of all, he stuffed the debate segment within a one hour and 20 minute video with the title, quote, the greatest cell phone H3H3 Rex himself brags about it. And he then pinned this comment to the top of that video, which says, how cowardly is it to accept an honest debate challenge and bring in a grifter with one sixth of your following to debate for you? Are you crying? Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. You're crying. Oh, so you're not actually the coward. Ethan is the coward. It's not you who left, wouldn't even debate. Ethan's the coward. And Sam Cedar is a grifter because he wants to debate you. Again, you are a debate, bro. The right has cultivated this culture within political discourse to challenge any and everyone to debates. So you have someone who wants to debate you and all of a sudden you're, you're mad because his audience isn't big enough or you were ambushed when you've done the same thing to Jen Uger of the Young Turks and others. It's just, it's embarrassing. There's really no way out of this and he's trying so hard like he's in full on damage control mode, but you look like a bitch, Steven. Take the fucking L because you're only making yourself look worse. Like people who are just neutral and they don't have any idea who Sam Cedar, Ethan Klein or Steven Crowder is, like they can see this and obviously deduce, well, the guy who like left mid-debate, who challenges everyone to debates, he must be the one who's in the wrong. He's the one who looks like the coward. But in Steven Crowder's like twisted mind, he thinks that he's the winner. Or actually, you know what? I don't even think that he believes that. I think that he's projecting what he wants people to see. But in actuality, that's all a facade. Like deep down, he is embarrassed because that was embarrassing. Like you are the debate me guy and you left mid-debate or you wouldn't even start the debate. You can tell how fearful you were. And you know, the right wing media sphere is also trying to do damage control at the behest of Stephen Crowder. So the Daily Wire penned an article in Stephen Crowder's defense uh, titled, Stephen Crowder showed why we shouldn't engage with debate me bros. Now, first of all, again, it's the right wingers who started this debate me bro bullshit. You are the ones who started all of this? And this article was written in an outlet owned by Ben Shapiro, who is another debate me bro, who just challenged AOC to a debate last year. And now all of a sudden, debate me is bad and you shouldn't engage with debate me bros. Again, you are the ones who started this culture. You made debates a sort of pissing contest, you know, among political commentators. And now all of a sudden, when the debate culture is backfiring, you're against it. How convenient. Now, also, uh, Tim Pool, otherwise known as Pim Tool, he decided to speak up. He actually is someone, to his credit, who did debate Sam Cedar, but for whatever reason, he was really outraged that Sam Cedar would dare and try to debate someone who wants to debate everyone. And take a look. Like, he actually is getting genuinely angry here in this clip. You know, it's fine, Ethan. Do your pop culture comedy stuff. It's funny stuff. I got no issue with that. But don't come into this space where people are trying to have very serious conversations about how people live and how people might die if we don't solve certain problems and then set it on fire and kick the can down the road or just make everything worse. You bring in a con, a con man like Sam Cedar, whose whole business is just burning things down for personal gain, and I'm going to get pissed off about it. Yeah, you seem pretty mad, Tim. You seem really mad. First of all, Ethan didn't just insert himself into the world of political commentary. Steven Crowder challenged him to a debate. Second of all, you claim that Sam Cedar is a con man for simply trying to debate Steven Crowder who wants to debate everyone. And by you saying that Sam Cedar is a con man, it sounds like you're trying to cancel him. I thought that the right was against cancel culture. Now are you doing a flip-flop because they're trying to do what you all want leftists to do, which is debate. And third, stop pretending like you and Steven Crowder are actually talking about serious issues. Just the other day, Steven Crowder did a video where he was wearing a cape talking about how gay men are predators. You're not solving the issues in the world, Pim Tool. You're part of the fucking problem. And finally, no matter how hard you try to spin this to make Sam Cedar and Ethan Klein look like the bad guys, like it or not, your boy, Steven Crowder, looks like a coward right now. So you can try to do damage control, you can try to spin and twist the narrative, retake control of the narrative, but the fact remains that most people are going to see that this was thoroughly embarrassing for Steven Crowder. So if he had any dignity uh, left, he would just acknowledge that this was embarrassing for him and have some humility and take the L. 
but you're not going to do that because part of your whole like persona as a right winger is to huff and puff and act tough. I mean, the dude wears gun holsters, right? So he can never show any sign of weakness whatsoever because that would mean that he's a cuck. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you try to portray yourself. People see what happened. Steven Crowder is a coward. And now going forward, nobody should ever take him seriously when he says anyone else is a coward. Steven, this is Jesse. I hear from Sam that you won't debate him, that you have cold feet, and that you are a beta male, beta, if it's true, beta male. And by the way, Sam said he is an alpha male, alpha male, not a beta male, and that you are afraid to debate him, Stephen. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And that your father should stop allowing you to be beta Debate Sam, Stephen. Don't be afraid. Don't be a beta male. Oh no, Sam Steeter. What a wow, what a fucking nightmare. Beta. Half a male, not a beta male.